Hi everyone, so today we're going to be self-hosting Chaskick, which is an open source chat platform that helps you to not only chat with your customers like it says here, but also um, it provides you with some marketing features as well as a help center. So we're going to get started here on Coolify. So we're going to add a project. And uh, Chaskick is a service and Chaskick is a service that's already available on Coolify. So we're going to click add a resource and we're just going to search for it. Chaskick. Click select your server. And so now we're almost ready. I'm just going to make the service name shorter here and click save. And same thing with this bit right here. We're going to shorten the domain name. And so that's it. Um, so we've got the chest kick image here and a sidekick service as well as a Postgres and Redis service. And we've got some environment variables as well as, and we've got some environment variables. There's a few of them here. And uh, if you're seriously considering hosting chest kick, and you should add in an SM SMTP address. Delivery method is either SES or SMTP, I believe. And uh, you add in your SMTP username and password. So your email that you're going to be sending from and the password of that email. And as well as the AWS bucket region access key ID and access key, secret key that you are going to be using. But uh, for now, I'm just going to be trying to deploy it without those things because I'm not intending to actually use Chaskick. We're just trying it out. So the only variables that we're going to care about is the email and the password. These are the only variables that we're going to need to sign in. And so let's go ahead and click deploy. So as you can see here, we actually got an error and um, it's for both images that are the same image, the Chaskick image that's being used is actually built for a different architecture than the server that we are hosting Coolify on. So mine is ARM64 and it's expecting the image, well the image is built as AMD64 and so my server's architecture cannot run this image. So if you don't have this issue, you'll be able to host it um, relative, relatively simply just with the deploy command. But um, in my case, I have to figure out a workaround because I can't use this image. And unfortunately, if we go to Docker Hub, There is no image for the uh, architecture that I'm on. And we'll be able to see that here under tags. There's just this architecture. So the options are quite limited. Um, one, one solution that I found was to add a platform value here and specify it specifically here. That didn't work for me. So what I had to do was I pulled the repository, the Chaskick repository locally, and I built the image using my machine, which is using ARM64. And so you can see the command here. I just ran the Docker build command and I called it under my name here. And then I pushed it on Docker. So it's a uh, publicly available. And then what we're going to do is going to modify the image here to use the one that I just created. So we go ahead, click save, and we're going to stop the image. Well, actually, let's just try restarting the degraded services and see if that uh, works. 
So this time it looks like the containers have been started and uh, some of them are already showing as healthy and we don't see that error so far. So we're going to wait a little bit longer and see if everything looks good. And you can see here that the container says that it's healthy. So let's close this. I'm going to restart. I'm going to refresh right here. It says degraded unhealthy, but um, as you can see here, we've got healthy signs on all of these containers. So maybe it's just referring to these two. So let's go ahead and uh, try this URL and see if it works. So I'm going to try again, but this time I've shortened the URL of the service. I've removed the two services that were tied to the previous image. And so now when we click deploy, let's see if it uh, works without any issues. Oh, and I should also say that I've added AWS credentials to see if that's why when I was accessing the URL, if that's why it wasn't uh, working, because I do know that uh, I suspect that that might be the reason why I was getting that error message earlier. So now our containers have started. We're just waiting for the last one to be healthy. Sidekick. So we can close this for now. And there you go. It says it's healthy. So let's visit the URL. And now it works. So it looks like it was the AWS credentials that were missing. And uh, that will make more sense once we log in. So we're going to be using the credentials that are available here. And obviously you can change them uh, before deploying, I would imagine. So go ahead and enter your credentials here and then click connect. And now you are in Chesskick. So I've got a couple of test apps here and that's because I've ran, I think I've deployed a couple of times. And so it uh, seeded the application multiple times. So let's go into one of them. The first thing you're going to want to do is actually go into the messenger settings because um, all of this really revolves around the chat feature. And if you don't actually activate the messenger, you won't be able to see it. So let's do that first. And uh, since we're here, just go through some of the settings. So you can add translations. You can have specific privacy settings or GDPR or otherwise. You can add some apps, although I didn't see that many on here. You can add your availability of your team. So for example, your team responds within hours. Uh, you can specify the time, the specific range. So for example, Monday to nine to five, Then you have whether or not you require emails from the people who are uh, on the chats. And so you can see it affects the, the conversation response. So if you require email outside of office hours, it doesn't affect it that much, but it definitely does when you are always requiring it. And you can also change the messenger's styling as well. So that's uh, all we're going to check out. Let's just get into the actual platform itself and test it. So normally you're supposed to copy this snippet and paste it on your page and then the chat will pop up. But in my case, um, I'm too lazy to do that because I don't actually have a site to test this on. We're just going to open the chat tester. And uh, if we've set things up, if we've activated the messenger, the pop up will show up here. So you could click on that and then, you know, start a conversation. And then you start typing hello there. And you can see the bot immediately responds. So this is the experience that your that your um, users can expect. And so in here, if we go into conversations, you can see the first one is here. Then we can respond. Hello from 
the app like that. And there's a lot of features. I'm not going to go through each one of them, but for instance, you can assign somebody to this particular conversation. You can start a video call with this user. You can paste all sorts of things. You can also use scripts. So quick replies are basically like a, a scripted reply. You can add attachments. You can interact with a video. So you can record a video and send it. You can record just audio and send it. It's very versatile in how you can interact with the person that you're chatting with. So that's pretty neat. And you can view your your uh, leads and users here. You can also, this is where the marketing features are highlighted. So you can have mailing campaigns. So this could be part of a mailing list where you send whatever mailing list that you're looking to send. And uh, haven't looked too much in these in-app messages and banners, but guided tours is like a, an onboarding guided tour that you can set up as well. And uh, you can set up specific routing tasks. So for instance, you're talking with somebody and um, the bot will ask specific questions and route them to the specific team or um, uh, perform a specific action. So you can do that. And then you have the help center where you can, which is what it sounds like, you create articles. And then you create collections, which are a group of articles. And then you can host this help center somewhere. And I haven't actually tested this out, but um, I'm sure there's some tutorials on YouTube on how to do that. And the reports. So it's kind of like a GitHub uh, activity chart here with some stats. So quite useful. And this is how you self-host it with Coolify. We did encounter a little bit of a hiccup because of our server server's architecture, but uh, we went around that. One thing though, is that building this image means that the image is not going to get updates unless we rebuild the image. And another thing is that the image itself that I've built is actually quite large. I think it was four gigabytes when I checked almost five, which is much larger than the official one. And I'm not sure why another uh, thing to consider. So all in all, I would not advise using the image that I've built, but for the purpose of this demo, this is what the solution was. And perhaps you can figure out another solution or somebody in the comments can comment on another way of resolving this issue without jumping through so many hoops. So that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.